Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. And this is Paul's prayer for the Ephesians. This is why I kneel before the Father. Every ethnic group in heaven or on earth is recognized by him. I ask that he will strengthen you in your inner selves from the riches of his glory through the Spirit. I ask that Christ will live in your hearts through faith. As a result of having strong roots in love, I ask that you'll have the power to grasp love's width and length, height and depth, together with all believers. I ask that you'll know the love of Christ that is beyond knowledge so that you will be filled entirely with the fullness of God. Glory to God who is able to do far beyond all we could ask or imagine by his power at work within us. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus for all generations, forever and always. Amen. You are a church that cares. Epworth, you are a church that cares for each other. This is your plumb line. This is your constant. This is your foundation, your home base. This is the constant that must never change. You are a church that cares. And if you continue in that constant, if you continue in roots deep in God's love that allow the blossoming of care that I have witnessed and that I have received in my time here, then that love and that care, that constant, will make all the other changes that life throws your way possible. This is what happens when the church is the church. When Don falls and in two weeks there's a ramp at Don and Kay's house so that he and they can still be connected with small groups and in worship and here this morning. This is what happens when we give of ourselves We've all received Bob Cofield's calls checking in on us if we weren't there this morning and Sunday to make sure that everything is okay. And while we're talking about that corner, it's Irma and Virginia taking care of each other and checking in and Les and Dawn with all of their guffaws and jokes that are so deeply rooted in love and holding one another no matter what happens and breathing that Holy Spirit possibility in. And how many of us have received plants from Mr. John McGuckin and have a garden built from him? And it's what happens when Kathy arrives late Sunday after Sunday and asks for forgiveness from Madeline. Oh, yeah, I'm calling you out. And then at one point says, can you forgive me? And Madeline's, yes, if you give me your scarf. And she does. And now Madeline has this new fabulous scarf and a good friend. It's what happens when Herb drives all the way up to Shrewsbury, Pennsylvania to bring Reverend Hurley to worship so that he can be in community in the church that he served and then take him all the way back up and come back down with Phyllis. This is the love that we extend to each other. It's Barbara and Bob working hours at UCAN and Beth too. And then it's Linda and Mill opening up the Thrifty Penny at different times so people can come in with dignity and get what they need when they're not going to be able to pay, pay for it. It's the hours that Lee and Carolyn and all Carrie and everyone put into that Thrifty Penny. It's Carolyn and Carol showing up at Jean Gross's new assisted living apartment and taking her out to Miss Shirley's, a moment that she has still not stopped talking about and grinning about and how she always wanted to be there. 
These are the moments of life shared. It's when our trustees like Wayne and Pat hold longer office hours than your paid office staff do here taking care of the church. It's Rachel and all that she's done and organized for children's church so that there's a specific place for the kids to learn at their level and coordinating that with Katie every other Sunday, giving that and making that possible. It's Praneeth as he teaches Sunday school and goes to all kinds of different grocery stores trying to find cool ranch Doritos for the kids because it has to be cool ranch and finally getting that put together. It's Bob and Sylvia when they show up for Mrs. Rogers and take her to her eye appointment and then take her out to Panera to celebrate her pressure going down and Mrs. Rogers not wanting to be out and eating out because it gives her anxiety to eat out in public with poor eyesight and then her saying, but with the two of them, Pastor, I didn't feel any nervousness at all. It was just right. And Mrs. Rogers calling Bob her angel, and Bob saying, well, I've been called a lot of things, Mrs. Rogers, but angel? <laughs> this is you, a church who cares. This is who you are and what you do. It's the generosity that I've received and gifts of going to Shen Yun with Abraham, of having a double hammock with a rain guard now for when we go camping. It's gifts of a good pie party that was pretty much a second wedding reception. <laughs> and that generosity and that love poured out in abundance. This is who you are. This is Kim taking care of our finances and doing more for Epworth while she's at her job at Towson and just saying, it's fine, I got this, I can figure it out. And always being there ready to sort through. It's Steve and Leslie here in their constancy with greeting every single Sunday and Jim with his coffee being made every single Sunday. It's Arun and Chandra and the feast of a breakfast that they prepare after sunrise service so that we can all be nourished and make it through Easter celebrations. It's Mike doing the cabling by himself to save us money to get the new video system in place. There's so much. And have we seen Debbie's decorations for Vacation Bible School and the time that is put in to get those together? There is so much that is given and that is shared. And I'm so grateful for it. I'm so grateful that you are a church that cares. It makes everything possible. We can just look at the turnaround that has happened from our Children's Center because Carolyn and Judy and Rob are coming in every week to meet with folks. And now because of that reassurance and that trust that the church cares and is present, there's an entirely new tone over there and new working capability. It's amazing what happens when we live as people who care as people who are rooted in God's love. And I know that the chapter the United Methodist Church is in and heading into is not going to be an easy one. We just talked last week about a chapter of the church, of the early church that wasn't easy either, of deciding and figuring out the way through the tension and the conflict of Gentiles and do they have to convert to Judaism or can they simply come and be followers of the way as well and how do we sort through that? We shared the Acts chapter 15 of the testimonies that were listened to and that were received from Paul and Barnabas and all that was decided to go in and to not stand in the way of the Holy Spirit. It's not always going to be that smooth, and it wasn't that smooth back then. Um, what I didn't share with you last week was the passage from Galatians that has a very different take on what happened at that council. 
But when Cephas, that's Paul, came to Antioch, I, or Peter, sorry, when Peter came to Antioch, I, Paul, opposed him to his face because he was wrong. And then it goes on for a few good more verses of how exactly Paul opposed Peter to his face and what exactly he said and the insults that uh, were recorded for all of the thousand years of posterity. We're not always going to live into our best selves. That's where the work of God and the power of the Holy Spirit comes in. Why we are needed to be rooted in love. Because when we are rooted in love, and when that root of love blossoms into care, that's when we can walk through fire and not be burnt, and walk through the waters and not have them overwhelm us. The benediction um, that I've shared with you that's been attributed to Paul from Ephesians, our scripture passage from today, is typically translated, I have the NRSV up here, um, of from every family in heaven and on earth taking God's name. Why Paul bows before the Father. What I like about the Common English Bible translation is how it connects it. Um, so that we can't forget it or gloss over it with the conflict that is going on. Paul says, this is why I kneel before the Father. Every ethnic group in heaven or on earth is recognized by him. He's making a direct tie to the conflict. He's tying his worship and his faith to how he is able to live through this conflict and find a way through. And that is something that I hope and I pray for, for all of the United Methodist Church and all churches, as well as for you at birth. And I know it's going to be hard. Conflict and tension always is. But I know you can do it, and I know that you will make it, and I know this because you already have. Do you remember our very first conflict? Not the politics stuff, but way back in my very first year here when we didn't have the children's church volunteers and kids were in worship service and there was so much movement that people were having trouble and thinking that they were going to need to leave the church. And we had our very first all church council meeting, right, to talk about it and find a way through. And we had those four cards, right? We, we went into this with the 75-25% rule that we are going to come into worship with the expectation that we will be filled 75% of the time and that we will intentionally give up 25% to make up someone else's 75%. And so we had our three cards of what we needed to have to be filled in our 75% and then we had our one card of what we could give up in that 25%. And as we worked through it, that's why we have silent prayer now in service, because of a call of just needing some quiet, still focused time to pray for the friend who was going through cancer, for the aunt who had passed, and not getting that with all of the movement that was happening. You've already walked through a fire and didn't get burnt. You've already encountered waters of two opposing needs from members of your family and one worship service and made a way for both and. You are a church that cares and you have already been able to care for one another not from scarcity, and it means that we care for one, that means we drop somebody else, but from abundance, from roots in God's love that bring seed to flower and flower to fruit. Barbara Jones has given me permission to share this. I will never forget the moment that we had and talked about this in the midst of this tension and crisis. She was one of the ones that was discerning the need to leave because she just wasn't able to be in worship with the movement of the kids all around. And then as she prayed about it, she came back to me and what she says is, you know what I realized? I realized it's not the noise that's bothering me, it's the movement. And so all I have to do is close my eyes if it starts to bother me and I can still be in worship, and I can still get the focus I need. 
That, Epworth, is a church who cares. That is who you are, Epworth. You care. And if you live in this constant, this constant that must never change, then you will be able to handle whatever waters are coming and whatever fire you encounter. Because all you have to do is call forth this body, heart, soul memory of what you have already done, of what you have already accomplished in the power and the rootedness of God's love. And God will be able to do in you, through you, and with you more than you can ever imagine. Because that is who God is. So be who you are, a church that cares, no matter what. Amen.